Hey guys, Miles from Nexus Core here. I'm bringing you my Wait, deck. How do we know you're Miles from Nexus Core? How do you know I'm wearing pants? Okay, <laughs> Atlas. Okay, Atlas. Um, I'm bringing you my uh, Weeaboo World deck profile, Katana World deck profile. Naruto World. Yeah, basically. See, he's doing the Naruto thing, the Nin Nin. Um, so this is the uh, Gargantua variant. So like, I'm running all the, you know, like That's my. Net. Else in Japanese. Yeah, Yatabayo. Believe it. Yeah. Um, oh, I haven't heard him say believe it in a while. Can, can I? No. Can, can no. I do my deck profile? No, you kept interrupting me by being loud, so... Naruto dies at the end of part six. And Jotaro <laughs> becomes Okage. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, your buddy in, like, any DDT deck now has to be a uh, DD Gargantua Dragon. Um, it's the worldless one. It's the new Gargantua. And here is what it does. The reason I run it as Buddy first, well, let me, let's go into the actual card. I run four of it. Um, so its initial skill is you can use it in all worlds as is tradition for Garga. Um, but the thing is, is that if it's your Buddy, you can use, how, how is it exactly worded? You may use Dragod monsters from all worlds. So, all of, like, the modes from Dragon World and, like, the, 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 um, Jiraiya and Wind Demons from Katana World and then, like, the Mages from Magic World, those are all Dragod. So regardless of world, regardless of deck, as long as this card's your buddy, you don't even need to main deck it. You can just run the one for your buddy. Um, so people are trying to make funny, like, shenanigan decks that, like, just run them. No, don't um, make fun shenanigan decks and buddy play. Only take it seriously. What are you, a Vanguard player? Oh, wait, they don't take it seriously. They're bad. Um, yeah, budget decks are meta in Vanguard, haven't you heard? Uh, so, um, yeah, as long as it's your buddy, you can run any Dragod. Uh, so it allows for a lot more offense potential. Um, especially, again, in these decks that didn't get a pusher, like Raging Mode or um, Blast Mode, Tempest Mode, uh, Cyclone. Just all those, like, triple attack, multiple attack stuff that deal a lot of damage. So, yeah. Um, then the other thing is uh, it's got a new G Evo called Deity G Evo. And literally what it is is it's after it battles, um, you draw a card. If you declare the activation, you draw a card and then call up to one Dragod from your hand on top of this card without paying call costs. So it's basically just G Evo plus a draw before it. So... If you don't have any Jeevo targets, you can just declare that you're using it after this attacks and potentially top deck a Jeevo target. Also, um, if this card is getting attacked, that still counts as being in a battle. So if this card still remains on the field after the battle resolves, you can activate its Jeevo on your opponent's turn. So that can add a lot of... Um, that's the same wording for uh, the original Jeevo too. Also, this card's DD Jeevo also counts as regular G Evo. So any card that's like, you need a card with G Evo in the soul, you need a card, when this card activates, buy G Evo, do X, this counts. Um, then the, what I think is the most important skill is its counter ability, where during your turn, you can call this card from the soul of a monster, on, of a dragon on your field by paying its call cost. And that's not once per turn. So however many times you can pay the cost, you can keep looping this card out and then like, G you, okay, right, sorry. Deity Jeevo can be only be used once per turn. However, if you have like switch mode or the, the new switch mode that I'll go into in a bit, um, you can keep looping this card out of the soul, Jeevoing into it with, Jeevoing into other cards with it and then looping it out. So a lot of offensive potential, and it's also a 10-3-5, so it's a lot more offensive. Um, and it has move, penetrate, and soul guard. Really fun card. Uh, also easy call cost. One gauge, top card, deck to soul. Um, yeah. Get this card, it's good. Uh, now, to keep it a katana deck, of course, we're running katana world drag odds. This is, um, what is this card called? Gargantua Thunder Deity Wind Demon Dragon. It's got triple attack and soul guard. It is a 626. Don't care about the call cost. Um, if this card has a soul with G Evo, uh, then all cards on your field gain 5k. That's cool. Um, what's more important though is its other effect, which I don't even believe requires G Evo. Yeah. Um, 
it is... Oh, never mind. This the call cost is actually important. Put a card from your drop zone into its gauge and pay into its soul and pay two gauge. So if you have a uh, DD Gargantua in the drop, sorry, I thought it was top deck. If you have a DD Gargantua in the drop and you're like, oh no, how am I going to do my Jeevo plays? You can hard call this, throw it into the soul, and then if you have the gauge, which you know you should, because um, the deck gains a lot of gauge, uh, then later on in that turn you can call it out and then like redo your G deity G Evo, and then you can just call it out again. So see, you kind of like loop them around. So it's just a nice little reset. Um, but anyway, the other skill I like about it is that at the end of any battle it makes, yeah, at the end of that this card attacked, put up to one card from the top of your deck face down on your field as a size zero, six, six, two, six, two, six, um, drag god monster. So you kind of create like these tokens. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. It has triple attack, and that ability isn't... Yeah, it has triple attack, and that ability isn't once per turn. So you can go, like, if this is on your left or right, you can swing once, call a target to the center. Swing again, call a target to the center. Swing a third time... Um, sorry, let's be smart here. Swing with one of the tokens, swing a third time, and then call a third one. So you can have... It just adds even more, like, layers of multi-attacking to the um, offensive formula. So, yeah, the only real shutdown for this is uh, Jose's, or Astro Dragon's, um, Star Dragon World's Phase Seal Chains, and, um, yeah, is it top of the deck? Face down on the field. Doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be unoccupied. Um, yeah, so the only real way around this is, like, resting it before it can do its thing. Um, uh... What's the card? Um, phase Seal Chains or Buddy Block. So, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, then I still run one of the um, Gargantua Wind Demon Dragon. Uh, its call cost is the same. It's like... No, it's pay one gauge instead and then add a drop, a card from Drop to Soul. That's cool. Um, it helps again with that reset. Uh, it's got double attack and Soul Guard, so um, a little less offensive, and it's got the same 6 to 6 dots. Anyway, um... Uh, you, it has a once per turn skill where it is counter call the top card of your deck face down as a 626 size 0 dragon however if you have a card with jivo in its soul you gain you can do that a second time so here's the cool part also um if your opponent is attacking this card you can activate its ability on their turn and call the token uh, it's not actually a token but you know call that size 0 dragon over it and the attack whiffs um, so it's just for those, like, very tight defensive issues, like, if you want to call this to the center and your opponent has Penetrate or something, you can call over it, and it'll completely whiff the attack, so you take no damage. But, um, for the most part, it is not your full offensive potential, so you don't often want to go into it. Um, now we are running some... Uh, other world Gargantua Dragons, uh, because we can because of the buddy. So this is Gargantua Dragon Raging Mode. Um, its call cost is kind of heavy, pay through gauge, top card deck to soul. Again, with Dragons, you seldom worry about that. Uh, when it enters the field by G Evo, for this turn it gains quadruple attack. It's also a 12 to 6, so that's cool. However, during your turn, no, in general, if you have a dra if you have uh, three different named drag gods in your drop zone, this unit gains a crit. Then, if you have five or more different drag gods in drop, your opponent cannot counter during the battles the, during these this card's battles. So, like, they can't nullify, they can't react. If it says counter, they cannot use it. This card is a. 12 damage monster that cannot be stopped. This is your win con. Also, if you build up the soul, you can kind of do this card. You can kind of like call this card in one turn. So like one moment you'll have like one drag on and drop. But then if you keep, if you're, if you have like the consistent Jeevo, um, this is easier to do in Dragon World, but, um, uh, cause you have access to a uh, switch mode. Um, so, if you have, have like, done multiple Jeevos in a turn, you can use Deity Gargantua Dragon Scale, call over that pile, send all of them to the drop zone, because that's how cards work, and you can just call this out, like, by another Jeevo, and you'll probably meet the condition in, like, a turn. This can, like, kill really early on. TLDR, Deity Gargantua good. 
Yeah, well, I was going over Raging Mode, but yes. Um, here's another great offensive card that I have uh, $40 fucked Jose yeah. over with multiple times. Um, Galaxy Braver Gargantua Quasar. It is a 10-3-7, uh, and it has Move and Soul Guard. Oh, by the way, this has Penetrate, so it's even better. Um, so it's got Move and Soul Guard. Uh, call cost is pay through gauge and put top card to deck to soul, whatever. If it entered by Gevo, you check the top four cards, add one to your hand, and stack the other three on top of- add up to one and stack the rest on top of your deck in any order. Cool. Gives you resources and, like, you can kind of play out how you're going to draw. That's not the point. Um, its other ability is counter during your battle- during your attack phase, you mill. The, you can may mill the top card. If it's a monster, add it to your hand, and this card gains penetrate and triple attack. So on top of already having move, so it's like kind of a defensive card. It's got seven k defense. That's cool. Um, you can make it a very offensive force. Like it's kind of just a more balanced version of raging mode. Um, and both are great. This card gets you so many resources, you you still can kind of, like, plan out the rest of your turn, or like, okay, next turn I want to draw this, I'm going to charge this away, and I'll make sure I draw into the last card in the pile. So you can kind of, like, plot out how you're, how the next turn's going to go. Um, yeah, I love this card. It's, it's, that's nine damage right there, and it's got Penetrate again. Um, another one that's awesome is, uh, this is a long name. Bless you, Jose. Thank you. This is the Legend World promo we got for, uh, Gargantua Dragon, so it is super cool. Um, Combat Deity Great Hero Dragon, Gargantua Kaiser. It is a 10 to 6. Call cost is pay through gauge, top card of the deck of the soul, and all items on your field cannot be destroyed by card effects. Um, that's whatever. Uh... That kind of actually does matter. Garkuna, I don't think it can be destroyed. But its other skill is even better. When it enters the field, um, not by Jiva, just in general, equip up to one item from your deck by paying its equip cost. Uh, if you... And then shuffle, yeah. Um, also up to one, so you don't need to pick a card. You can also just shuffle through your deck. So if you don't have any items left, no big deal. Um, however, if it entered by G Evo, for this turn, this card and the equipped item get 30k power and two additional criticals. It also has move, double attack, and soul guard. The double attack is a big thing because this swing for 40k for two attacks, and then your item, Garkunai, is going to be 20... I want to say 29? Is it, is it a 6? Oh, no, 26. 36, sorry. The reason why this is important is because max dragons are a deck, and they have massive-ass defense. This hits over that, and your item. So you have about three attacks that are all swinging above max dragon numbers. This is your way to kill them. Um, you only need two because it's like, after a while, you're not going to have the items left, and that becomes too heavy of a cost. Also, you can loop them from drop. I'm going to show you later. This is a nice tech I added. Um, it is the Ancient World Garga. Uh, Deity Against All Gargantua Dragon Ice Invector. Um, it is a 10-3-10 uh, counteract during, your during the battle of this card. So that can be when it attacks or when it is attacked. You may discard a card from your hand. If you do, this card gains 10k power and 10k defense. However, if you have a card with Jivo in its soul, um then uh, it gains 20k, 20k. So it's not an instead. If you have it and you discard the card, it gains a total of 30k. So it's very similar to Kaiser. However, this card is move, double attack, counter attack, and soul guard. So you can turn this defense into an offense as well to start to clear out your opponent's board and kind of like, my, like manage their offense. Um, I wrote it at one because it's just not super important for most decks. And a big reason why I run it is actually that it discards a card, because this is Katana World, and as you're about to find out, most of the spells trigger off of being discarded. Uh, this card I might take out, but I do like the board wipe it does. It is Fickle Dragon of Black Flames. Is that what it's... Oh God, it's so edgy. Fickle Dragon of Black Fa Flames, Gargantua Phantom. Just move in Soul Guard. It is a 9-3-6, which is a really weird... Gargantuan number. 
Um, but it's the Darkness Dragon World Gargantua, and um, similar to uh, Deity Wind Demon, it's two gauge and put a card from your drop into its soul, so you can use it uh, as Cold House, so you can use it to um, reset your Deity Gargantua in case it got destroyed and you don't have it on the field anymore, you don't have any in hand. It's just a nice little clean reset. Um, the only issue is that it's a heavy, like, three gauge to get that card back on the field, but, like, it's really not that big of a deal with how much gauge this game, this ga deck gains. Um, anyway, when it enters the field, pick a, mo destroy a card on your opponent's field. Cool. Um, if it entered by G, Evo, destroy all cards on your opponent's field and burn them one damage for each card destroyed. And even if a card gets soul guarded, it still counts as a destruction, so they still take damage. So you have potential to, if your opponent is at low damage, you have a potential to actually kill them solely by wiping them. So you get a board wipe and you burn them for damage. It also has shadow dive. So a neat little three crit shadow dive to the face. You know, who can say no? Um, you also just want to run a various, like, various Gargas for Raging Mode. You just want to make sure that you can easily get that off. So those are all our drag gods. Um, if I missed one you want to see, let me know and yell at me in the comments. And I'll tell you why you're wrong. Uh, here, we've got the size ones. It's a three Neen Cat. Um, I really want to run four of this. Unfortunately, it is a hard-to-find card because it's a secret pack, and, um... It's just kind of expensive. Like, for a while, the only one I saw was on eBay for, like, 25 bucks, which is an entire secret pack. Uh, and three is honestly fine. The deck gains resources enough without seeing this card. But what it does is when it enters the field, um, if you have another DDT, you may discard a card. Um, if you do, put the top card of your deck into your gauge, and you gain a life and draw. That's cool. Um, the discard's also really neat because, again your spells proc off of being discarded. So maybe run four. Um, if anything, I would keep it at three and instead run another uh, Knives Ninja Technique. I'm reading this upside down, sorry. Knives Ninja Technique Nin Bird. He finally Where's woke up and dogs? is holding a giant shuriken. Miles? What? Where's your Nin Dogs? Nin Dog? I don't run it. Oh, you don't run a Kamaru? Uh, I... I don't run the, the I don't run the Katana World version. Okay. It's just not that they're well, not Kamaru that. Would, would, would hate you they're not that good. Me. They're not that good. It's okay. He would be proud of me because I'm not using an inferior dog. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Good. Um, it is a four one one. You don't care about its stats. Uh, it's a free call, but you can only call it once per turn. Um, its ability is when a Dragod monster enters your field only once per turn. Um, you may discard a card. Again, that's important because you proc your abilities off of being discarded. Uh, off of discarding. Um, if you discard a card, you gain two life, then check the top three cards. Add one to hand, stack the other two. So it's kind of like a, a prudent guard dog that I guess kind of does more. More for the resources, less for the offense. So you can proc it on your opponent's turn too. You can proc it on your own turn. Uh, you can't do it multiple times. But if you do it with Quasar, you basically get two... Searches you you proc this first get your card then you go into quasar get another card So it's a plus two just for doing that and then you gain life super cool That two life right there is how you pay the cost for your spell null. So anyway, those are our monsters now here are our spells We run two radiant combat deities glory um, This has worked for me at two but you might want to try it at three. Um, I have killed plenty of times before I feel the need to use it more than like use it more than once. Honestly, um, it also is a. It can only be cast once per turn, so you don't want it to clog your hand very much. Anyway, what it does is it's pay one gauge. Um, it's worldless. It's it's just like a gargantua dragon spell. Um, you can run it in any deck you want. Uh, pay one gauge to call it, to cast it, um, G Evo, call up to one Deity Dragon Tribe monster with Gargantua in its card name from your drop zone on top of a Dragon monster on your field without paying its call cost. Um, the called card for the turn gains 5k power and 5k defense, so you make your cards even more defensive, you can use it on your opponent's turn to surprise them, basically it just Gevos from drop, that's what's important. 
Also, again, uh, when it says this spell can only be cast once per turn, if your opponent nullifies the cast, it was not cast, so you can cast it a second time if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, then we run our set spell. Um, this one is something I'd rather put at three, but I just don't... This deck has to be so fast, I don't like the cloggy dead draws. Uh, Art of Truancy, I love this card. So set, um, first off, all DD Dragon Tribe monsters on your field cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. Um, the other ability is super cool. You can only set this card once per turn. You can only have one of this card set also, so like you don't want to have multiple set anyway, and it will just become fodder for your discards. Um, so its skill is once per turn, you may pay a gauge and discard a card from your hand, draw two. This gains you resources, and again, not to sound like a broken record, but it procs your discard spells. Cool card. Now here are those spells I was talking about that do stuff when they get discarded. Four Futon uh, Sweeping Whirlwind. Um, its first skill is just put a ninja monster from your drop zone into your hand. Cool. Gets you cards back that may have died. That did die. Its other skill, I think, is far better. And the, the only reason you use this card when this card is discarded, uh, when this card is dropped from your hand by a card effect, um, put the top card of your deck into your gauge and draw. Resources. So obviously run four and it's not once per turn. Then we run, this card's adorable, um, four ninja arts hiding in the fallen leaves. Uh, counter, you gain three life. Okay, so that's cool. You can use it as like a little surprise to survive. Um, which I have. It's it's honestly a little helpful. Um, but its other skill is when it gets dropped by a card effect, you gain a life and draw. So it's like Futon, but instead of the gauge, you gain a life. Important. Also not once per turn. So just get that life, get that gauge, get, the, get that hand. Super good. Speaking of draw power, we run to Combat Rations Gar Rice. Yes, that's a name. Uh, you may only cast this card if you have a dragon monster on your field, and the total power of monsters of cards on your field equal to 12,000 or greater, which is piss easy. Um, counter, draw two cards. Well, you can only use this card once per turn. Great draw. Great draw. It's free. It can be used in your opponent's turn in case you're in, in need of the clutch. Great draw. Then we can run a new spell that recently came out that I absolutely love. That was redundant, I'm sorry. Um, Deity Dragon Ninja Arts Shadow Flash Slash. Say that five times fast, guys. Um, you may only cast this card if you have a Dragod monster on your field and the total power of cards in your field is quote 12k or greater. Again, piss easy. You may uh, counter, choose and use one of the following two. Either for this turn, three cards in your field gain additional critical, really good for pushes, or destroy up to two cards in your opponent's field. I said cards, so this can this is really good for controlling your opponent if they're using Astro Dragons, because um, you can destroy their set spell, you can destroy their item in case they're if they're not using Rune Stones, which wouldn't they? And you can just destroy, you can fuck up their um, formations. So, their galaxy Fs. So, great card. Also, like, again, it turns Raging Mode into a f four crit. Um, Quasar into a four crit. Kaiser into a three crit. Great. But, on top of the item I'm going to go with later, that adds another crit, so you can hit, like, s like three to six damage off of one attack with cards that can attack two to four times. Uh, then I run a, this is kind of just, yeah, it's really just a fill space, and it's a pretty useful card. Um, Deity Dragon Futon Galeblade. Uh, counter, returning size two or less monster from the field, oh, monster or spell from the field, I mean, fr from your opponent's field to your, to their hand. Um, from your, yeah, from your opponent's field to hand. Uh, so cool. It's a little bit of a bounce. Its other skill is when it gets discarded by an effect, you may pay a life. If you do, bounce any card back to hand. Um, it's also not... It's not limited to your opponent, so you can pick your own. You can use it defensively. So that's cool. I only run one because it's like, you don't... You really don't need it. Um, it's like... An, it's... 
it's nice to have, it doesn't hurt not to see it. And then because it's limited to one, although I'd probably only run one just because of how tight this deck is, I run one Demon Way Soccer Fubuki. This is the spell null. You may only cast this card when your opponent casts a spell, obviously. Pay two life, counter, nullify the spell. Um, easy. You take life. And Nin Bird supplements that. So it's... It, if used in, at the right time, it's basically free. I just love it that it's a spell null that doesn't use gauge. Then we have your nullifiers, uh, Doton, or sorry, Deity Dragon Doton Cliff Splitting Wall. You may only cast this card if you have a DDT on the field, um, and it's your opponent's turn when they're attacking, obviously. Uh, nullify the attack, and then you may discard one card. If you do, you get two gauge and one draw. So not only does it already give you two gauge and one draw, but if you discard something like Futon or um, Hiding in Fallen Leaves, you just gain even more resources. Like, it's great. And then I run the one Art of Shadow Stitching. Um, you may only cast this card during an attack on your opponent's turn. Oh, by an attack on, from your opponent's monster. So this doesn't count for items, so be careful. It is pay one gauge, you nullify the attack, then pick... Um, Sorry, this is... I can't read upside down. Nullify the attack, then choose an attacking monster, and for this turn, the chosen card cannot stand. So it completely screws over anything that has more than one attack. Cool. S fuck you, Max Dragons. Uh, and you only run one because it's like, Doton is more important. Um, then for your items, you run the three... Deity Dragon Blade Garkunai. This is the item I was referring to that gives a crit. It is pay a gauge in life, similar to Garkris. Not nearly as good as Garkris, but it's super helpful for this deck. Also, um, Art of Truancy kind of does that for you, so no big deal. Uh, it's first ability is if you have a dragon on your field, all cards on your field gain 3k power and one critical, including this card. So this turns into a 6-3... It just gives a crit to everything. It's so good for the offensive because it just ups everything by an extra damage. Awesome. Uh, again, turn raging the turn it's used into a quadruple attack penetrating 15k monster with 5 crit each. That's 20 damage right there. And you can't, re you can't react to it. It's fantastic. Um, oh, sorry. Its other skill is a counter, not once per turn. Um, if you are being attacked, you may discard a ninja arts from your hand, and if you do, nullify the attack. So, those spells, Futon and, like, Hiding Leaves and Gale Blade, all that stuff, those are ninja arts. Um, so you can discard those to nullify an attack and then proc their abilities. Awesome. Resources. And then finally, your two Climax. I mean, whoa, where did that come out of? Your two Impacts. Um, D. Degrigantro Dragon for Katana World. Uh, you may only... This is, I'd say, the second easiest to use, but it's in a better deck than the Magic World one. So, we're gonna say it's the better one. <laughs> um, you may only cast this card if your opponent's life is 5 or less, you have a dragon on the field, and the total power of cards on your field is 12k or greater. Wow, so hard. Um, you can have an open center or a closed center, same for your opponent, so it's super ex it's super accessible to use. Uh, anyway, what it does is deal, pay two gauge, easy, deal five damage to your opponent, they can't nullify the damage, they can't, um, is that it, is that what it says? This card cannot be nullified and its damage cannot be reduced. Cool. Easy kill. Also, another thing, this is a drag god, so when this isn't dropped by sheer, like, coincidence, or, like, if you're discarding it for, like, Doton or something, um... This counts towards Raging Mode. So that's super cool. Uh, I have a sideboard. I'm still testing it out, but um, I have like one little gimmick that I think I want to get rid of, but uh, I'll show you. I run one. I haven't really tested out the Lost Egg. Um, if you want recommendations, I mean, if you want to give recommendations, I'm gladly taking them. Um, I kind of just grabbed a lot of cards that like friends were recommending to me and I put it together and then I thought of a little fun thing I can do against like size 3 centric decks where I am running one Oni Devouring Oni Kid Ibuki Arabone. Um, it is a size 3 10 3 1. It's got ambush. Okay, in case you guys don't know what ambush is, that was a skill introduced in X. Um, basically, when it is removed from the soul of a card on your field, you may pay its call cost and call it to the field instead of sending it to the draw. Here's why you run it. 
Um, sorry, no, we're going to that later. It's Call Custer's 2 gauge, um, and it's skill Hiding Demonic Deity. When it enters the field, put up to one card from your deck face down into this card's soul and shuffle your deck. This only activates once per turn. That's not a big deal. I really don't run it for that. Why I run it is it's Overkill is super cool. Overkill is a uh, once per game ability, again, from X. And it's pay one gauge and discard a card from your hand during your opponent's attack phase. Nullify all abilities of your card on your opponent's field and destroy it. So if your opponent doesn't have a method of protecting nullification, this just immediately destroys like their big monster. Again, this is primarily used for size three centric decks, and I might even take it out for like Lost World or something. I'm still playing around with it. This was more of a fun deck before anything. Um, how do you proc it off with Ambush? Easy. You run. Ninja, uh, you run Art of Explosive Hades Fall. It's a set spell. Um, to cast it, you pay one gauge and choose a card from your deck. Excuse me. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, pay one gauge and choose a card from your deck and put it into this card soul face down, then shuffle it. So your opponent can't check what it is. When a monster in your opponent's when a monster enters your opponent's field, you may remove all souls from this card into the drop zone. If you do, and if a card that is put into your drop zone has the same size as a monster that entered your opponent's field, destroy that card and deal two damage. So for something like Link Dragon Order, when they call their big Agito monster, you can sorry, ahead of time you set this, you add uh, Kid Ibiki to Soul. Then when they drop out their Agito, you activate it. It's a size three, so Agito gets destroyed. And then, does it say nullify the call specifically? Oh, it does not say nullify the call. It has to resolve. Okay, so if it has some kind of effect prevention, then that's rough. Um, yeah, so again, this is a little iffy. Not something I totally consider wanting to run, but it can be fun. Um, try it out. I am. But uh, Lost World is also viable. But anyway, yeah, you call out Eva Key by paying its call cost, and then you can go into its overkill or something. Um, I kind of just wanted to run it. I thought, like, oh, that would be funny. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I haven't had much of a reason to try it out yet. Uh, then here's more practical cards in the rest of the deck. Um, I run two Ninja Arts Vapor Crow. Uh, cast cost, pay one gauge, counter, choose and use one of the following two. Either return a size to a greater monster from the field to the, from, yeah, the field to hand, so it can be you or your opponent. Again, you don't, you don't really run size threes in this deck, so it doesn't actually matter. Um, or for this turn, damage dealt to you is reduced by one. That's cool. Um, it's also a... Oh, it's not a ninja art, so never mind. It's called ninja art, that's so dumb! That's stupid. Uh, okay. Cool card. Uh, it can be useful. Um, if anything, it's the bounce that makes it super... Well, not super useful, but, like, good. Then I run two Ninja Arts um, Snake Gaze. This is actually a Ninja Arts spell that says it's a Ninja Arts. It's pay one life, rest a card in your field, counter. Cool. Just easy card. Use against stuff that attacks a lot. Uh, then I run two double loss. Um, what I might end up doing is like drop the kid Ibuki key for uh, a double loss or the next spell I'm going to go into and then set these Hades fall as um, Lost World. But uh, I want to try out this kid Ibuki key play. I just really want to see if it works. Probably won't. But anyway, double loss. It is a Dragon World and Katana World um, dual card, so you can use it in either deck, obviously. Um, you may only use this card, you may only cast this card when a monster in your opponent's field is destroyed. So, what? Wait. When a monster on your field is destroyed. Sorry. And things have Soul Guard in this deck, so destruction isn't a big deal. Anyway, you pay one gauge on the destruction, drop a soul from a card from a monster on your opponent's field, and then destroy it. So if it's got only one soul, you drop the soul and then kill the card. If it's got multiple soul, you're just burning two soul. But it's a small cost to pay. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty useful. Again, like decks like Astrologia, um, where they don't really get a lot of soul, useful. Really have an apple? Yep. <laughs> and I sucked it all night long. Um, yeah, guys, I like sucking Adam's apples. Uh... This is a one of I run, I might want to put it to two, um, but the way I have my main deck set up, this is kind of like your replacement for Shadow Stitching given the matchup. Um, it is Ninja Arts 
half kill. Uh, again, that's why I'll run one, because it's like, oh, I'm switching out the one for the one, because uh, I don't want to mess up the ratios too much in this deck. But anyway, um, you may only cast this card when your opponent's monster with Soul Guard uh, are attacking. So it can be a link attack or a separate attack. Um, counter, nullify the attack and put all souls from the attacked from the attacking monster into the drop zone. Just a nice way to clear out the soul. Um, great against, uh, what's it called? Great against, um, Eldigo, great against Garga, great against, um, what's the third one? Uh, oh man, um, Blood Sect, in case you can't drop it. So, she did, I heard. Some fucking concert, yeah. Now she can go around the rest of her life telling people, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my sister might be living a better life than I am. No, she's not playing card games. She's not earning $60 off of card games. Uh, yeah, so, that that's the deck, everybody. Um, this is a fun deck, I like it. But I think the Dragon World deck is a little bit more enjoyable. I just feel like it can do more. But um, this deck seems to be doing really well right now in the current meta, from what I've heard, from what I've seen. But uh, yeah. Um, if y'all want to build it, give it a try. Let me know how it goes. And if you want, leave some recommendations in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Miles signing off. Weeaboos Unite.